This week on The Communicators, Federal Trade Commission Chair John Leibowitz on the FTC's recently released report on online privacy. John Leibowitz, before we get into the uh, substance of the mm -hmm. FTC's privacy report, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the policy or the process a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is referred to as a staff preliminary report. Mm -hmm. Where does it go next? Well, I think one of the things uh, that we do when we write a preliminary report um, is we take comments because uh, we take comments from stakeholders, consumer groups, industry, perhaps other government officials, maybe state attorneys general, um, because we understand a lot about privacy. and We've obviously worked to, to learn uh, quite a bit about internet privacy, uh, but we also understand uh, that uh, we're, not, we're not perfect, and so we want to take comments about things like how to implement a do not track mechanism. And um, and you know when we should uh, ensure that there's privacy by design, and so um, it's a good practice, uh, and it's one that helps us uh, ensure that we uh, we get the best information and uh, from the folks who are really uh, involved in the day-to-day -day workings of industry. Well, this report has just come out. Mm -hmm. So, what is the next step? What happens next? Does it go to Congress? Does it go to the full FTC board? What well, happens? Well, we have uh, we have sent it up to Congress, of course, uh, and there's been a lot of it's really resonated, as I think uh, you guys know, um, and uh, will uh, and it has gone up to the FTC board. The commissioners we voted five nothing. We're a very consensus-driven organization uh, to release the report and to move forward, and um, that's something I think we're all very proud of is the sort of pragmatic approach we have to real people's problems and privacy issues in particular, and, uh, and so we'll refine it. We might make a few changes here and there. Uh, by suggestions given to you? By suggestions given to us by stakeholders, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll move forward with the final report sometime next year. All right. There are three major points to this report mm -hmm. that uh, you have uh, uh, sent up to Congress. Number one is companies should promote consumer privacy through their organizations and at every stage of the development of their products and services, which you call privacy by de design. Point number two in this report, simplified choice. Mm -hmm. Companies should simplify consumer choice. And then finally, number three, you call for companies when it comes to online privacy to provide greater transparency of their data practices. That's exactly Let's start right. with point number one. What is privacy by design? Well, I think privacy by design, and I wish we could take credit for that phrase because it's a really wonderful one, but it actually comes from uh, the Privacy Commissioner of Ontario, a woman named Anne Kavukian, um, whose brother happens to be uh, uh, Rafi, the, uh, just as an aside, uh, Rafi, the uh, children's singer by the way, so um, who's, who's very, very famous. Uh, it, it, the notion of privacy by design is making sure that you have privacy protections in the technologies uh, that you develop. So let me give you an example of, pri of, of a failure of privacy by design. So if you look at sort of the peer-to-peer the -peer systems, um, there was no privacy component or a wholly inadequate privacy component um, early on. Um, and that's why uh, the, the earlier versions of like P2P file sharing services uh, allowed for a lot of theft of information uh, inadvertently from people's consu from, uh, from uh, consumers' computers and even from government computers and corporate computers, and we wrote a report on that. So that's why we think baking in privacy protections or privacy by design is an enormously important uh, feature of technology going forward. Tony Rahm of Politico is also joining us as our guest reporter. Great, thanks so much for having me. Let's let's dig a little bit more into the privacy by design sure. aspect of this report. <clears throat> you know, it's one thing to say that, you know, various companies and technology should just bake in privacy to everything they do, but what role does the FTC play in making sure that happens and then making sure that those tools do what they're promised to do? So uh, I, I would say we have uh, two, two roles here, and this goes even beyond this section. One role is a policy function where we, uh, I mean, this report is really in a certain sense um, uh, twofold. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's best practices for companies and its advice to lawmakers, members of Congress, as they think through privacy, which I, I think we all recognize is going to be a major debate next year um, in Congress, and should be. Um, and uh, so our role is, one, providing guidance to companies, um, and two is when they fall below the standards that we expect of them, when they engage in unfair, deceptive acts or practices, or they have inadequate data security, um, bring enforcement actions. Um, you know, bringing cases and bringing cases against companies uh, under our statute. Sure. Speaking of those enforcement actions, 
as all this plays out on the report, you guys solicit more reaction from stakeholders, you speak mm -hmm. with lawmakers, and then you finally issue that final report. What can the FTC do now, just with the framework, the draft framework that you've put together? So, uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's already having an effect. I mean, what we, and, and we have been, we, we expected to have, I mean, we, we've worked with companies, we've worked with consumer groups, and so we expected to have a somewhat favorable reaction. Um, but but from, uh, from companies, from consumer groups, from lawmakers, uh, you know, across the board, this is a very, bi privacy is a very bipartisan issue. Um, w w we've really, uh, 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 people have really uh, been very supportive of our report, and, um, and I think we'll get to do not track later, but um, just yesterday, uh, Microsoft announced that it was going to offer consumers a do not track mechanism, which I think, uh, one, uh, makes it clear that do not track is technologically feasible. Um, and two means we're getting buy-in from companies, and it's much easier for companies to move uh, voluntarily to have privacy by design or uh, give choice to consumers or have more transparency uh, than it is to do by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, government regulation. So we're, we're agnostic. We're happy to have, um, uh, we're just happy to see uh, companies move forward. Well, speaking of Microsoft, we had a, a, a privacy series here on the communicators mm -hmm. back in September, and one of our guests was Ann Toth of mm -hmm. Yahoo, mm -hmm. and she talked about what Yahoo does for, uh, to, to ensure privacy. Mm -hmm. Well, browsers, you know, technology uh, on the internet has a lot to do with browsers and delivering pages to specific users, and, and it is fairly technical. We go into it in some detail in our privacy policy and talk to consumers about the very specific types of data that's being transmitted by your browser to our servers. Uh, that's the kind of data that our data retention policy uh, de-identifies or deletes after 90 days so that it's not kept in perpetuity. But what we're trying to do is rather than rely simply on a privacy policy to convey this information to consumers, consumers, we're looking for different ways to really make this kind of information a lot more uh, understandable, to simplify it, to really speak to consumers in a language they can understand. And we're looking for symbols, we're looking for uh, shortcuts to get consumers really actionable privacy information uh, that they don't have to dig around and look for that's really readily available to them in the product interaction. Well, I mean, I, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, Yahoo has a, a wonderful and very evolved data retention policy. Um, when you do a Yahoo search, they only keep the data, uh, I think, it's, as, as Ann mentioned, for 90 days. Uh, and one of the things uh, that we say in our report uh, is that data should only be kept as long as necessary. And so um, we want to see more responsible companies out there. A lot of them are, uh, but not all of them. So let's dig a little bit more into Do Not Track. As you, as you mentioned, Microsoft had just announced yesterday that Internet Explorer 9 would have mm -hmm. a tracking protection technology into it. What specifically do you think about that technology? It, it includes a component that would allow various groups, individuals, uh, you know, even government agencies, I suppose, to draft their own lists of sites mm -hmm. that are red lighted and green lighted. You know, those technologies or those ad networks that you would and wouldn't see. What do you think about that particular functionality? Well, well first, I mean, we, we, you know, I want to commend Microsoft for doing this and uh, uh, for trying to give consumers real choice about being tracked by third party cookies. Um, th that's part of the reason why we put out really a preliminary report and why we want feedback because uh, uh, that is one approach you can take to uh, uh, block third party cookies and empower consumers. It obviously requires the creation of sort of, you know, blacklists and whitelists or red light, you know, sites and green light sites. Um, and so uh, I think what they're doing is, is, is really uh, a, 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 an important step forward. Uh, we'd like to see other technology companies, and we have been talking to them and browser vendors, uh, move forward as well. And I think you'll see that in coming days. And, um, and, we'd, uh, and we're hoping that the advertiser community um, will also uh, uh, support this. And speaking of the advertising community, here's what the Interactive Advertising Bureau had to say about mm -hmm. your Do Not Track proposal. The Internet is comprised of millions of interconnected websites, networks, and computers, a literal ecosystem, all built upon the flow of different types of data. To create a Do Not Track program would require re-engineering the Internet's architecture. Well, I, I don't think Microsoft is re-engineering the Internet's architecture. I think they're just giving consumers choice. And look, I understand. Uh, the Interactive Advertising Bureau. They're a lobbying organization for companies that like to put third-party cookies in consumers' computers. And, 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 you know, so they're doing what they do. But we're also doing what we think we should do. And if you, if you think about third-party tracking, 
distinguished from when you go on a site, right? You go on an Amazon site or Netflix and they give you recommendations and I think we all understand, you know, that's the company you have a relationship with. When you think about third party tracking, let me, let me give you an analogy. So let's say you're walking around a mall or a shopping mall and there's a guy standing behind you and uh, he doesn't know your name but he sort of knows where you live and he's sort of following you and he's sending off emails to like every store in front of you saying, oh yeah, that's Leibowitz, he wants to buy a, a new suit and he's using an American Express card and, you know, I mean, if the guy's following you, that would be kind of troublesome. But if he's following your daughter, you'd want to like punch him out, right? And that's sort of what's going on um, with third party tracking. Most consumers don't realize that a cookie is put in their computer and it follows them all around uh, on the internet. And we're not saying, and, and by the way, if someone gave me the option of not being tracked on the internet, I would probably not take it because I sort of like having targeted ads and I think most people do. But consumers ought to have a choice and that's of course one of the fundamental uh, components of our, of our report. Sure. Now, as you said, you've been talking with different companies and different browsers to kind of implement this technology, see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. How does industry self-regulation work here? I mean, half of the half of the formulation that the FTC put together in its draft report was that either Congress could grant the authority or industry could lead the way. So what role does the FTC play if industry does lead the way? What kind of enforcement effort do you guys take? Well, I would say two things. If industry, you know, uh, comes around to this, we will commend them for it because they will be taking a major step um, in favor of consumer choice and consumer privacy, and that's really important. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they don't, we have our bully pulpit. Um, and uh, we sometimes admonish folks who don't necessarily uh, uh, violate the law, but could be doing a better job. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so that's, that's one part of it. And the other thing, the other part of our bully pulpit, of course, too, is, and the Commission's not in this position yet, is, of course, we could go and call for a, you know, call for legislation on this. And, uh, and I think many of the companies um, uh, 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 who, who, who want to do the right thing to give consumers more choice about third party tracking and about a bunch of other privacy issues would prefer to do it uh, voluntarily than have Congress write perhaps more prescriptive rules. Sure. What, what takeaways did you take from the do not track hearing that was on Capitol Hill last week? Did you get the impression that lawmakers were on the same track as the FTC or that the issue might become rather political uh, in the beginning of the 112? Um, I uh, got the sense that privacy, and I know this because I've testified a lot on privacy issues, is a really bipartisan, uh, is a bipartisan issue. Um, when I testified about um, about internet privacy uh, with the FCC Chair Julius Janikowski before the Senate, Com uh, Senate Commerce Committee at the beginning, I think it was the beginning of August. Um, it was amazing how, you know, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't just uh, Chairman Rockefeller, but also Senator Thune, Senator Johans, um, a wide variety of people uh, across the, you know, on both sides of the aisle, they really care about consumer privacy. Um, and so uh, when I watched um, and, and listened to parts of that hearing, um, and I think it was one of those hearings that started and then there were two hours of votes and people came <laughs> back and so it was a 10 o'clock hearing in the morning that ended at like 2 in the afternoon, so I caught some of it. Um, y you know, I was very pleased by the reception. Now, there was no doubt that folks like the IAB had done their homework and they'd gone in to visit members and so there were some questions asked that were, you know, totally legitimate questions. Um, but I think for the most part we are going to see a lot of resonance um, on Capitol Hill in terms of supporting consumer privacy. Sure, and, and, and there does seem to be that there, just considering, you know, the new members entering the 112th are interested in privacy, the new chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Fred Upton, is interested in privacy, mm -hmm. but there seems to be a disconnect between Democrats and Republicans on the issue of do not track. Ed Whitfield, for example, who could potentially take over the Consumer Protection Subcommittee, wasn't a huge fan of the technology. He didn't really speak very favorably of it at last week's hearing. So do you sense there's a political disconnect on that issue? I really don't. I really don't. And, uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, I, I think particularly if it's implemented by companies, I think, I think some of the uh, uh, some of the business community who uh, oppo that opposes what we're doing probably said, you know, industry is totally opposed to this and, you know, and, you know, y y this is going to change, as, as, as the quote was from the IAB, change the, uh, the ecosystem of the Internet. But I think when you start to see companies like Microsoft, you know, which is not, which is, you know, the, the leading browser company with, I think, a 59% market share endorse this, I think that also uh, 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 sort of helps uh, so that it helps people understand, members of Congress, that, you know what, it's not opposed by the business community. The business community wants to do the right thing. 
John Leibowitz, uh, one of the things I read in your report on the Do Not Track mm -hmm. was that it, most of us on the commission support the Do Not Track, is, is how it was written in the mm -hmm. report. It, was there uh, dissension? Uh, there was no dissent. It was uh, it was a five nothing uh, report. Um, one of my colleagues, Bill Kovacic, who is a wonderful commissioner and was the chairman, the last chairman under President Bush, and stayed, um, was concerned that the, te the technology wasn't quite there yet. And I think um, I haven't talked to uh, to Bill uh, since uh, the since the Microsoft announcement. But my guess is this will you know sort of help uh, uh, help give him some comfort. And um, and again, I think that uh, it was this, he 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 had a, a um, I think he concurred in his recommendation and and uh, but all of us and, and this is one of the wonderful things about the Federal Trade Commission, you know, all of us are committed to the mission of the agency. All of us are committed to uh, ensuring privacy protections and balancing it because we obviously want business innovation and an innovative internet. Um, and all of us were committed to moving this report forward. How does Do Not Track compare to the uh, quite popular Do Not Call? Uh, well, they have similar names, um, and uh, uh, and they're both designed to protect consumer privacy, uh, but they're very different. Um, with Do Not Call, uh, there's a registry, as as you know, and uh, and by the way, and and there are I think very close to 200 million phone numbers signed up for it. It's really helped to ensure uh, the peace and quiet of Americans Dinner Hour and. Um, uh, the humorous Dave Barry called it the most popular government program since the Elvis stamp. And uh, uh, with Do Not Track, it is conceptually similar insofar as um, we, are, uh, uh, we are calling for something that would help ensure consumer privacy and consumer choice. Um, but it's, it's different. We didn't want to have a main registry of numbers because we thought that could be uh, harvested by spammers and, and uh, and, uh, and, and and spyware malefactors. And so um, w we also thought and uh, that the technology was just about there or is about to be there for the ability to block third party tracking from consumers. We thought it could be done voluntarily and done through the browsers. Uh, um, and so uh, uh, we're bringing on a wonderful, uh, Tony, you probably know this, uh, technologist uh, named uh, uh, Ed Felton. He's a Princeton engineering professor to be our chief technologist, and he actually, although he hasn't started full time yet, was very, very involved in um, in uh, thinking through the Do Not Track registry and, and in reviewing the whole privacy report, and that's been very helpful to us. This is C-SPAN's Communicators Program. Our guest is John Leibowitz, chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. We're talking about the preliminary staff report on online privacy. Tony Rahm with the Politico is our guest reporter. Mr. Rahm, next question. Sure. One of the things that I've heard from stakeholders is that there's a growing fear that a do not track like technology would put consumers in a position where they couldn't access sites they wanted if do not track was enabled. So for example, just like you know, consumers have to register to access a site, they've got to put their email address and a password in to mm -hmm. access content, that if they had do not track enabled, they wouldn't be able to view the content they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Is that a realistic fear? And if it is, what kind of role does the FTC play in all of that? Well, I have heard some of this uh, sort of anecdotally. Uh, and uh, the role that, again, I mean, we want to empower companies to do this in the way that they that they feel they can effectuate it uh, 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 best. Uh, but um, part of the reason why we do a preliminary report is to take comments about the best way or series of ways to do this. You could you could standardize uh, a, a do not track mechanism in a browser. Uh, you could have some sort of standardization, or you could have different approaches. And so, um, and I think uh, whether it's Microsoft that had this announcement about sort of you know, a red light and green light list, and, and you could pick your list so that presumably you wouldn't be blocked from, uh, from accessing the sites you want, or whether it's the approach that Mozilla has been thinking about, which is the second largest browser vendor, um, where you would have a protocol that says, do not track me, and companies or advertisers would have to say, um, oh, we agree to this protocol, we won't track you. Um, you know, this is a time for sort of rolling out the technology, Thinking about the way it will work best. Again, what we want is consumer choice, and you know, as as, as those uh, uh, those in the community that oppose do not track. And as you know, there's much more in our report than just do not track. Although sure. that's the thing that's resonated the most. Um, you know, it's 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 what, for example, the IAB. I have a lot of respect for them, but they're a lobbying organization. Wants to do is raise concerns. Now, 
if they have empirical concerns, and they're not just anecdotal, I'm sure that uh, the innovative internet business community can start to work them out. John Leibowitz, another thing in your report or another area in your report is transparency. Mm -hmm. And uh, when companies provide their online privacy statements to consumers, uh, you have described them in the report as incomprehensible and inadequate. Um, I think that was my description of. I think that was my description of how we described it in the report. Our report is slightly more nuanced, but as we all understand, consumers don't read privacy policies, particularly when you're on, uh, you know, particularly online. What consumers want to get to is the last box to click, which is I want to make this purchase or I want to do this, and and so um, uh, you know these privacy policies are written by lawyers. Uh, I'm a lawyer too. I don't like to admit that to people, but uh, uh, and uh, and they're full of legalisms. And consumer, what we and consumers really deserve a clearer, you know, more transparent notices, and so that they can and shorter ones, so that they can sort of understand what they're actually agreeing to. Um, there was a. Uh, and that's particularly true, by the way, in the mobile space, where you know, as so much internet advertising and so much of the internet migrates to mobile, I mean, how can you do 20 clicks to get to the uh, the privacy policy, right? I mean, it's just, it's it's almost inherently unfair to consumers. Um, there is a, uh, a British gaming company uh, on April Fools. Uh, they wrote a clause. It's an online gaming company. They wrote a clause into their. Uh, uniform, uh, the, the EULA, the licensing agreement that said, um, if you opt out, we will give you six pounds, I don't know, about ten dollars, uh, if you opt out of this privacy policy. But if you don't opt out, uh, then we have your soul. You have given us your soul for all eternity. Do you know what percentage of people opted out? <laughs> 11%. And that's a very sophisticated community, right? The online gaming community. So um, we all understand uh, companies could do a better, and they know it too, companies can do a better job with privacy policies. Sure. Now, to turn a little bit towards enforcement, one of the things that I know you and others at the FTC acknowledged on a call with reporters last week was that the agency had talked a little bit with Adobe about flash cookie technology. Mm -hmm. Could you give a little bit more about what the FTC is doing in that space? Well, um, on flash cookie technology, um, one of the uh, uh, obstacles to a um, to a do not track mechanism for third party cookies is that the browser, at this point, not all browsers can block, and I think most browsers can't block third party uh, can't block uh, Adobe flash cookies. So our staff is working with Adobe uh, to try to come up with a way to do that. And um, I think the very smart uh, people who develop browsers and internet technologies uh, for the major browser vendors are also sort of looking at that too. Sure, but with respect to Adobe and to other companies that mm -hmm. act in this space, are there other enforcement actions coming down at this time with respect to privacy? Y yes, I mean, so, so put Adobe aside, this is a sort of a policy issue with respect to Adobe. Um, but uh, we have a number of investigations involving internet privacy in the pipeline. We had a few announcements uh, 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 in the last few weeks, but you'll see more. Anything you're able to detail? <laughs> Nothing I'm able to detail. Had to try. <laughs> um, one of the uh, areas that you have worked on in this report, thirdly, is simplified consumer choice. Mm -hmm. um, that companies are not providing, in your words, uh, consumers with choice mm -hmm. uh, whether or not they want to be tracked. Is that something that you would like to see mandated? It's something I would like to see at this point, and the commission, I think, would like to see more of for consumers. Um, there, there are some areas, by the way, where you don't need to have choice. Uh, so, for example, if I go to an internet site and I order a product, I don't think I should have to get a choice for how they ship it or whether my information goes to the shipper. It's obviously, uh, it, it, it's sort of what we anticipate will happen when we buy a product from Amazon or from somewhere else. Um, um, there are other areas. Tracking is one where we think, but not the only one, where we think consumers should have choice about what's going on with their data. Because again, there's a whole ecosystem, and some of it's very good. Nobody wants to get rid of the free internet and content that consumers have come to, uh, the free content on the internet that consumers have come to sort of uh, both uh, love and expect. Uh, but there's a lot of things that just don't involve uh, uh, consumers. They don't see. They ought to have more choice about that. John Leibowitz, in the past you've used notice and choice and harm-based tools mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, assist consumers. How effective have they been? Um, we think they have been very effective in some areas and somewhat effective in other areas. So, for example, there was a problem four or five years ago with um, 
uh, with uh, it, what we would call, kind of spyware called nuisance adware, where you would go on um, the uh, you would you would click on something. Uh, some piece of software, something on the internet, and it would uh, put some software in your computer that would feed you advertisements. Um, and you know, maybe it only feeds you 10 or 15 advertisements a day, but one uh, uh, one company we brought an action against um, acknowledged that they uh, that they were responsible for six billion ads in consumers' computers. In the aggregate, that's a lot of harm. And so, both the harm-based approach. Um, and the fair information practice principles, notice and choice approach, um, have been uh, two different ways in which we uh, we uh, have looked at uh, at privacy issues, um, and and this way sort of is a some incorporates those and evolves a little bit beyond them as well. Sure, I suppose the next step of of, of, of this talk is to look at do not track in relation to the other issues here. Mm -hmm. It seems that the debate has focused almost entirely on do not track. I guess the question is, do you think that it's been to the detriment of the rest of the report that, you know, mm -hmm. companies and stakeholders and, you know, even us sitting at this table, we talk a lot about the new technology, but not so much about things like privacy, literacy, and education? Right. Well, I don't think it's been to the detriment of the report. I, I think it's just the part that we knew would resonate uh, the most, and it is, you know, I mean, it has resonated enormously across uh, uh, different stakeholders and, and really in the, and, and among consumers. Um, there are a lot of other things in the report, but it's only been out for a week. It's only, in, as you pointed out, in preliminary form. Um, so I think that the notion of sort of educating consumers and having uh, companies provide a little more balance and choice to consumers um, will uh, will continue to be discussed. Um, our, our expectation is that we'll go up and do hearings next year before members of Congress and, uh, in both houses. And uh, and so no, uh, you know I, I did when when I did a when we did a press availability right after we released the report after about a half an hour and you, you might have been on on that call. <laughs> Um, I had to say, remember, there's more the, to this report than do not track. But at the end, I think, you know, it's a very substantive report. Our staff did a terrific job, as did the commissioners. And we had this re draft report percolating at the commission for quite some time. And uh, and I think it's going to, I think the whole thing will resonate. Um, and uh, hopefully we can move forward with a little more choice, transparency uh, uh, for consumers and more baked in privacy protections. Too. John Liebowitz, are there any differences in policy recommendations for wireless? Um, I, I think our policy recommendations are, cons I would say this, our policy recommendations are consistent um, across different platforms. But when it comes to wireless and to handheld devices, um, y you have to think about them to a slightly, in a slightly different way. So for example, um, one issue is, let's take privacy policies. Consumers ought to know what the privacy policy is. How do you get a privacy policy in a screen where consumers will actually see it before they, you know, agree to give their information to a marketer. Um, and uh, so you just have to, I mean, sort of not unlike our antitrust laws, which um, have served us so well for more than 100 years, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the rules and the approaches, in this case the guidance, I think, works very well across platforms, but it has to be thought of um, uh, slightly differently with respect to sort of, you know, each technological platform we're looking at. And finally, is there any protection for all of the personal and private information that's already out there? Well, there is a sort of horse uh, is out of the barn notion. Um, the, 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 the protection is this. If a company has inadequate data security, and we've brought, I think, 29 or 30 data security cases in the last decade, um, we, uh, uh, y you know, we will hopefully find out about that before there is some harm uh, done. Uh, inadequate data security is within our unfair deceptive acts or practices statute um, for the most part. And, uh, but no, there's a lot of information out there, including social security numbers, uh, that uh, is personally identifiable or could be aggregated to make a personal identification. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be involved in this to ensure that companies have better data, pr data protection policies and, uh, and to ensure that going forward um, uh, uh, companies strike the right balance, and, and, and some of them already do, uh, between um, um, using, uh, acquiring useful data and uh, using um, and, and giving consumers more choice and transparency. John Leibowitz is chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. Tony Rahm, tech reporter with the Politico. Thank you, gentlemen, for being on The Communicators. Thank you for yeah. having me.
In London, students...